Yo, what's up guys? It's NLW here, back again with another video. Today, it is my Royal Rumble 2021 review. There's been a lot to talk about on this show. Some good, some bad, but I'm going to go through it match by match and tell you exactly what I think. But before I do that, leave a like on the video as it helps the channel a lot. Also, subscribe if you haven't already. We're trying to edge closer to 500 subs here on this channel. But without further ado, let's get into this review. So before we got the main card, we got the kickoff match. It's for the women's tag team titles. Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax challenging Oscar and Charlotte Flair, the champions. Not really been digging this feud. I haven't really kept up with the weekly programs either. I think Asuka could be doing so much more, but it is what it is. Anyway, this match, very clunky to start off. I mean, Nia Jax is just botching all over the place, stumbling. I can't believe she's actually gotten worse. It did get a little bit better towards the end, though, towards the second half. Charlotte cracking out a moonsault on the pre-show for some reason. It ends when Lacey Evans comes down to ringside with Ric Flair. Flair hands her some brass knucks or something, hits Charlotte in the face, and that allows Nia Jax to hit the leg drop and get the win. And the new tag team champions are Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler. If I had to give it something, I guess it was a thumbs down, but it's perfectly serviceable for what it was. I don't really care for the angle between Flair and Lacey, but I'll give it some time, see where it goes. But again, the women's tag scene pretty dire at the moment. Now to kick off the main card, it's the match that everyone was looking forward to. Goldberg versus Drew McIntyre for the WWE Championship. Goldberg comes out, he's already sweating, he looks gassed, and he's wearing the MMA shorts or whatever's going on there. Doesn't look like the Goldberg that we're used to or they showed in the promo packages. McIntyre comes out looking like a million bucks. It's your standard Goldberg match essentially. Spear, spear, jackhammer, claymore, claymore, finish a spam. Drew McIntyre, still your WWE Champion. Not much to say about this one, obviously. If you've watched any Goldberg match, you know the formula by now. But they do have celebrations and hugs at the end of the match. So it did what it needed to do. Put over Drew McIntyre as champion. I wish it was someone else in that position other than Goldberg. Hopefully he stays out of the title picture for now. But good thumbs up that McIntyre is still the champion. Next up, it's for the SmackDown Women's Championship as Sasha Banks defends the title against Carmella with Reginald at ringside. And maybe it's because I've watched Nia Jax and Goldberg in two back-to-back -back matches, but I have to say I enjoyed this matchup. It was pretty good throughout. You know, Reginald, he was getting involved. He eventually got kicked out, and that allowed Carmella to hit a tope suicida where she nearly spiked herself. Luckily, though, she was okay, and she managed to continue the match. It ends when Sasha Banks is being dragged to the center of the ring by Carmella, but it gets turned around into the bank statement. The tap-out win for Sasha Banks, and she's still the champion. And overall, like I said before, maybe it's because my expectations are low so far in the show. However, I really enjoyed this match. Even though it was fairly short, I'd give it a thumbs up. Now we've got the Women's Royal Rumble. Starting off, we have Bailey and Naomi as number one and two. They go off at it for a while until Bianca Belair comes in at number three. So my pick in an early start, I was a bit worried there. Billy Kay's out next, and she's trying to look for mates to help her in the match and I won't go for it spot for spot but it starts off pretty good because you've got a couple of NXT women in there with Shotzi Blackheart, Tony Storm and Santana Garrett they're all doing really well and then Gillian Hall her 10 year old me would change the channel when she was on back in the day and now her shrill voice is back in the Royal Rumble and that was quite funny I guess and it seems so far to be well wrestled compared to past Rumbles but the quality did dip as it went along in my opinion we had uh, the likes of Victoria and Tori Wilson you know I like seeing the nostalgia there but so far there's nothing that's really memorable in this match got Rhea Ripley coming out at number 14 that's certainly surprising partly because I completely forgot to add her I probably would have picked her to win had I not picked Bianca Belair so it's good to see her in the Rumble and then we have Charlotte Flair out next Dana Brooke comes in and she botches a spot and they have to do it again and the Rumble's getting a bit messy at this point and then Ric Flair comes out with Lacey Evans in her robe and Charlotte's attacking her and is getting really angry over this and uh, I forget what I said earlier I'm not digging this angle anymore it's boring and then just about that Bailey gets eliminated out of the view of every camera we didn't even get to see it and the rumble it does seem to be getting worse as it goes along the quality is dipping a little bit we have alicia fox come out and then our truth and the job squad of 24 7 guys alicia fox actually becoming the 24 7 champion until truth rolls her up and wins the title back and while that's going on the women's rumble is just an afterthought for all the job guys to run after truth there's a few more nxt people to come with dakota kai and then carmella comes out meanwhile rhea ripley she's eliminating people left and right we get the naomi spot where she's got her legs in the air and she's holding the hair of bianca Belair comes in and then Lana comes out 
and I'm fearing the worst because there have been rumours that she was going to win the thing, but Alexa's out after that. She tries to get spooky or whatever she's doing now. I'm not really paying attention to the main product, but she gets thrown out. Good. I don't really like that goofy stuff. And Ember Moon out next. She should already be on the main roster in my opinion, but at least she's got NXT at the moment. Then Nia Jax. Yippee! And Nia and Shayna job out all the women in the ring. And Lana rids Nia, but they don't care. They're annoyed. Come back in, destroy everyone, and that portion i'm glad it's over get naya and shana out of there so natalia's at number 30 but she's eliminated by bianca belair and now is the point where the rumble actually gets good because we're down to the final three we've got bianca belair charlotte flair and rhea ripley and flair's got this massive grin on her face as if to say i'm about to bury the both of you but instead she is eliminated by both bianca and rhea and we are down to the final two bianca and Rhea Ripley and I have to say this last portion of the match was absolutely fantastic I loved it they are teetering on the apron there but they call a truce go back into the ring continue the fight it looked as if Rhea had Belair pushing her off the top rope they trade a couple of maneuvers but ultimately it's Bianca Belair clotheslining out Rhea Ripley to win the Women's Royal Rumble a fantastic ending and my pick wins Belair is going to Wrestlemania so on the whole in terms of the Women's Rumble I didn't enjoy most of it it started quite well but it was a bit boring in the middle I did get a kick of seeing I did get a kick out of seeing some of the entrance but the middle part and the Nia Shayna stuff was absolutely atrocious in my opinion but once it came down to the final two it became amazing Rhea Ripley Bianca Belair, the future of WWE's women's division. And from number three, Bianca Belair goes on to WrestleMania. Again, most of the Rumble didn't care for it, except for the final two, the sequence between Belair and Rhea Ripley. That was absolutely amazing. So because of that, I'm going to have to give it a thumbs up. So now we move on to the last man standing match for the Universal Championship. Roman Reigns, the tribal chief, puts it on the line against Kevin Owens. And when I heard it was a last man standing match, have to admit those matches tend to be a little bit boring because, you know, you do a spot, and then you wait and you do another spot and then you wait. However, they managed to keep this one very exciting. In fact, one of my favorite matches on the show, absolutely fantastic from start to finish. They really made use of the Thunderdome Arena going up into the stands, making use of the space. At one point, Kevin Owens got thrown off of the Thunderdome through a table, but he kept getting up. And then he just stumbled his way backstage and got hit with a golf cart, went through the glass, And I was surprised that he got up from that. I thought they were just going to bury him right there and then. But no, instead, he comes back fighting. Roman Reigns, though, keeps pummeling him. And then Owens somehow finds a way to put him on a table. And for some reason, the referee just stopped counting and let Owens climb to the top of the forklift. Regardless of that, it was a cool visual with the swanton through the table. Then Roman Reigns with a desperation spear through the LED screen. Roman gets handcuffed to an LED light and pulls the referee in because he's about to lose and then there's some sort of miscommunication or there's a botch between Heyman and the handcuffs because they're not coming undone the referee's at six and he just for some reason stops his count because he knows that Roman isn't going to be able to get up regardless of that little hiccup I thought the match was fantastic Roman locking in the guillotine choke and surviving as still your universal champion great match loved it apart from that botch I don't know why they didn't just use fake handcuffs but it is what it is aside from that absolutely fantastic match the tribal chief rolls on as the universal champion now we come on to the main event the 30 man royal rumble match the winner gets a shot at wrestlemania number one is edge number two randy orton but edge doesn't want to wait goes and attacks randy orton immediately they start brawling Sami Zayn comes in they try to double team on edge r lee also tries to gang up on edge we get jeff hardy in there and this is basically edge and orton's story for the most part in the early going edge with the ddt onto orton onto the announce table and a chair to the leg that takes out orton for most of the contest he goes to the back and then we got shinsuke nakamura one person who i thought had a chance of winning the rumble and then carlito he's back oh ruthless aggression baby you love to see it carlito back delivers the backstabber and the apple to shinsuke nakamura we get the new day coming in john morrison ricochet solid group of guys to be honest and then you got elias and damian priest another surprise entrant from nxt and he's just absolutely dominant he clears house of everyone in the ring we get the miz coming in and then there's a spot with bad bunny you know he's, he's not my favorite musician but it is what it is it was a fun spot to have in there then riddle 
he comes out. And number 17, somebody who I thought was going to win, Daniel Bryan. He's like a house of fire. And speaking of fire, entry number 18 is Kane. That's a nice surprise. Obviously, he's not in the best shape these days, but he's the mayor of uh, wherever he is, Tennessee or wherever he is. So Kane is back, obviously, to try and set a couple more records, eliminating a couple of guys until he comes face to face with Damian Priest. And inevitably, it is Damian Priest who hoofs out Kane. And Damian Priest is looking very strong in this match. Corbin out next, and then you've got a couple of more guys like Otis and Dominic Mysterio, who surprisingly, shockingly, eliminates Corbin. Bobby Lashley comes in, and he is also very dominant, eliminates a bunch of guys. The Hurricane, he was a nice surprise, although he does try and attack Lashley and Biggie to no success. He gets thrown out. And then number 24, probably my highlight of the night, Christian coming back. That took me completely by surprise because I've not really been keeping up with the message boards or the rumor mills, so I had no idea that Christian was going to come back. Man, so emotional, and you see Edge in the ring holding back tears because of how happy he is to see Christian get cleared as well. I'd love to see Christian in a couple more matches heading into Mania too. But man, just a feel-good moment to see Christian back. I know he's been trying to get cleared for years and finally, you'd love to see it. Hopefully he has more matches in his future. Number 25, AJ Styles. He's got Almost there and the story is that every time AJ is about to get eliminated, Almost is there to save AJ Styles. Rey Mysterio out, but again, he's taken out by Almost. He got number 27, Sheamus who also cleans house. Cesaro, who delivers a bunch of uppercuts. Number 29, surprise return for Seth Rollins. He was supposed to return at the start of the month, but he returns here, and he's immediately trying to manipulate people to get on his side, and he's just sneaking on the side of the ring, waiting for his opportunity to strike. And number 30, the man who returned on SmackDown, the monster among men, Braun Strowman. Naturally, he's a beast. He dominates everything in his sight. We get a couple more eliminations. Riddle is eliminated by a curb stomp, and we're down to the final four. Rollins and Strowman. Strowman, they want to team together, but Strowman says Psych hits him with a choke slam. Edge and Christian try to eliminate Braun, and it ends up being Seth Rollins who eliminates Braun, and then Christian is also hoofed out by Seth Rollins, and we're down to the final two. It's Edge, it's Rollins, the curb stomp is hit on Edge, but Edge reverses, Rollins over the top rope, and it looks like Edge has won the Rumble, but Psych, Randy Orton, he comes in, hits an RKO, he was never eliminated after all, and you think, oh no, they're not going to do it with Randy, are they? And no, instead, Edge reverses it, sends Orton over the top, and Edge is the winner of the Royal Rumble. He started at number one, only the third man in history to do so, and he is going to WrestleMania to face most likely Roman Reigns, but it could be Drew McIntyre, we'll see, but man oh man. Now, some people might be a little bit annoyed that Edge won the Rumble. And I forgot to mention Daniel Bryan got eliminated, but I think we're over getting annoyed that Daniel Bryan gets eliminated from Royal Rumbles, hopefully. But Edge winning, you know, may have been predicted. Certainly not from number one. But look, the guy's been gone for so many years, and quite honestly, he's put the work in. I think he deserves to win the Royal Rumble again. Would I have liked it to have been Daniel Bryan? Maybe. And Keith Lee, obviously, for COVID reasons, he couldn't be in the Rumble. But Edge, yeah, I'm happy. It was a feel-good Rumble. One of my favourites in many, many years, including last year's. Every entrant was solid, you know? Solid mid-card to main event status. You had Damian Priest in there, surprises like Carlito, the Hurricane, and of course Christian, the moment of the night in my opinion. And also you had a bunch of stuff happening and Daniel Bryan and Riddle's exchanges as well were just great. Orton and Edge at the start, just a fantastic rumble from start to finish. One of my favourites, probably of all time. There may be an exaggeration to some people but in my opinion it was one of my favourites to sit through. It was 4am in the UK when I watched it and I was still hooked, so gotta give it a thumbs up. So overall the Royal Rumble, very fun show. It started off a bit rocky you know you had Goldberg and Drew McIntyre it was what it needed to be so I'll give that a thumbs up Carmella and Sasha Banks again surprised me I thought it was pretty decent the women's rumble it started off well the bit in the middle was a bit boring and a bit sloppy but it definitely picked up steam towards the end with the final two in Bianca Belair and Rhea Ripley that was an amazing exchange and I'm so happy that Bianca won the last man standing match they really made use of the Thunderdome and the surroundings and it was a much different match to what we're used to seeing it reminded me of a ruthless aggression attitude era kind of brawl which I was all for apart from the botched finish but aside from that another great match and the Royal Rumble Christian's return the surprises like Damian Priest Carlito Kane the strong showings from Daniel Bryan Riddle and others Edge winning may not have been the first choice for some people but for me I'd be happy to see Edge in the main event of Wrestlemania so there's no complaints here but let me know what you thought of the Royal Rumble by sounding off in the comments below what was your favourite match are there any matches that you're disappointed by anything you're happy by what do you think of the Royal Rumble winners would you have changed them let me know in the comments below like the video if you enjoyed subscribe if you're new as we try and hit 500 subs on this channel soon don't forget to leave a comment and i will catch you guys later